I'm Demetrius Brown with Infinite Ideas Development Group, CEO, and you are watching Eye on Business. Scott Hamilton, CEO, Executive Next Practice Institute, and you are watching Eye on Business. Well, hello, everybody. This is Dave Burkus for the Burkus Report for Eye on Business. This program is a continuation of our several programs talking about the changes that are about to happen in technology, the disruptions that we're going to see, and the fact that we need to defend ourselves against changes in those disruptions. So today, our subject is 10 steps to defend against disruption, especially because of technology. A very important subject for all of us, especially in business. Number one, be really ready. <laughs> I think that we need to prepare to understand, to begin to believe that these changes are real and that we ought to do something about this, whether it means re-education, changing our product line, being able to change our services to adapt to the reality of the new demands of our customer base. All of these things are necessary for us to think through early and be really ready. Number two, well, don't panic. We have plenty of years to be able to figure this one out for most of our businesses. And yet, if we don't figure it out, we're going to be disrupted to a point where other people who have figured this out before us will certainly be the ones to survive. Number three, take a long view and a broad view of the way in which you want to address this. It's not a question of just adding a few products or changing a little bit of your service. It's much more of a question of understanding the trend and being ready for what the people will demand. Take that long view. Strategically plan for the way in which you and your business and your own career will change over time. You know, there's a fact I often quote, millennials are going to have 13 jobs in five different types of professions over their business career. That is shocking when you think about the kinds of training that we give today, which is very limited, and the fact that many of these people will not be prepared for the changes they're going to have to undertake. Number four, if you can, disrupt yourself. Don't wait for somebody else to disrupt you. And that could mean that your product may be too expensive. It could mean that you aren't using the latest technology. It could mean that you're not trained to do the things that other people who are being trained today can do. Disrupt yourself, a very important way. In fact, I have a story. A friend of mine has twice now come to his company and said, I am going to replace myself as CEO. He's done it twice. And in doing so, he has reinvented his company and himself and been very successful in doing so, a company worth well over a billion dollars as a result. He wouldn't have succeeded as well, if at all, if he hadn't thought in terms of how to disrupt himself over time. Number five, see your early successes and follow them and understand that they're probably the best way to see the way in which your audience will accept what you do as you change. Number six, create emerging technology scrums. And that means get your people together. Find ways in which your people can help you, whether they're associates or friends or employees or your superiors, whoever they are, can help you to think through what it is you need to do to be able to meet the challenges of this next generation. Create scrums. Those of you who understand the rapid development technologies that have been used, a scrum is nothing more or less than people getting together and thinking together about what they can do to help each other. Number seven, expect resistance. This is not going to be easy for any of us. Change is difficult, especially for people who are used to their jobs, like their jobs, and don't want to change. Expect resistance from those people who aren't willing to change. It has to happen. 
and people are going to have to know it and react to it. Number eight, don't get hung up on specific technology. There are going to be technology changes, waves of technology that will change the way in which we think and behave and act. We need to be resistant to that. Well, we don't need to be resistant to that. Don't get hung up on specific technologies. Number nine, focus on building capabilities that match the things that you can do best. Focus on the things you want to do, that you like to do, and that you're capable of doing. Because that's where you, as an individual, and your companies are going to win. And finally, number 10, reckon with legacy in, uh, in IT. Because you're going to find that there is a resistance from people who are in the IT department that are going to make it more difficult for you to make these changes that we're talking about happen. If you do all of these 10 things, you will be ready for what we think to be the next generation in technology and in our society. Well, it's a lot to think about, and certainly we have time to think about it, but if we don't start, we'll never get it done. This is Dave Burkus for the Burkus Report for Ion Technology, hoping that you will think about these things, and that I'll see you next time. Welcome back to Ion Business. I'm Kevin McDonald, and with us tonight is Demetrius Brown. Demetrius comes from a group called the Infinite Ideas Development Group. Demetrius has a very eclectic background in marketing and brand development and self-empowerment. He has a degree, a BA degree, actually, out of the University of California at Berkeley, and he's honoring us today with his time. Thank you so much for coming <laughs> I appreciate in. appreciate you, man. Thank you appreciate so much. Appreciate it very much. So, hey, um, Today, everything's about getting above the noise, right? Yeah. And if you don't have a really good, solid brand and a good you know, vision for your future that you can show the world, you don't have much. So it sounds to me like that's what you're about, right? I, am, uh, I have been in the digital marketing space since toys.com. Okay. So it tells you about how long that's been. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's, one, it's grown so much, so it's been really, uh, really phenomenal to see the growth mm -hmm. from what people couldn't understand to this is our way of life. So building a brand is, is everything. It's your, it's your message. It's your voice. It's your, your, your signature for the most mm -hmm. part. So our focus is to, you know, in our agency is protect the brand. No matter what we do is always about protecting the brand, building something that, um, you know, just take someone on a journey that they may have not ever thought they could go on. Mm -hmm. So is this typically for a new entrepreneur, for an active entrepreneur that's having trouble, you know, getting above the new noise or taking it to the next level? What's your primary focus in life? Uh, my primary focus in life or in the... In, in the, the business, yeah. In the business is to, you know, I think there's so much space that everyone can be successful. Mm -hmm. And while we have you know large clients like Medtronic and we also have smaller clients it's about helping everyone get to where they want to get to it's not about being a, it's, it's not always about the money it, it's about the, the purpose it's about the project it's about the person and that's what's foremost within our agency is are you doing something to help someone else further because if you focus on the people then the money will come by itself so it's how do we help people get to where they need to get to and in the process obviously you have to make a, a dollar but that can't be the, the focus. It, the focus is how do you help someone get to where they need to get to, whether it's a mom or pop mm -hmm. you know, or whether it's a, a large agency or, or company. It's, it's putting the brand first. It's putting the purpose first before you put the dollar. Well, I've it. always said those with an ethical passion for a purpose are always mm -hmm. the most successful. Completely. Um, you do it honestly, you do it actively, and you pay forward your efforts um, and hopefully, God willing, it all pays back, right? Always, that's right. That's what it's all about. <laughs> so... Um, you know, I hear a lot of things, uh, people saying, oh, I'm a dream about this, I want to do this, I want to do that. But dreams are kind of like those things that fade in the morning mm -hmm. as you wake up, unless you have a plan, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, it seems to me that today, the plan almost has to begin with the brand. Is that true? I, th I think yes and no. Okay. Because I, I think your brand is, it is a dream. Mm -hmm. But the way we work in our agency is you see the ending before the beginning. Right? You have to see where you're going. It's like I tell people all the time, you have to have a life GPS. Right. When you're going somewhere, you put, the G, you put your coordinates in the GPS or you tell it where you want to go, which is the ending. And then it maps out a road, a, a, a 
path for you on how you get there. Mm -hmm. And most times with life, we don't do that. Most times with business, we don't do that. We don't see the ending before the beginning. We see the moment that we're in, the space that we're in, and then we attempt to put a plan together yeah. to get to that. Yeah, point. operating under the tyranny of the urgent is what most there of us go. do every day, right? right? So, <laughs> and, th and there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, if I, a really good friend of mine always says, well, how do you know if you got there if you don't know where you're going? So exactly. I mean, you have to have that, that, exactly. that target, right? Mm -hmm. So it seems like you have a pretty exciting um, concept of the world. And, and in fact, you've even worked with folks like Tony Robbins. And right. you're, you're as much about empowerment of people as you are about the brand or the marketing or whatever it is and how do you mix those two I mean what's the what's the formula for you for me again it's what are you doing to help someone else it, mm -hmm. it can never be about yourself mm -hmm. it, 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 we teach we've been teaching our children the law of attraction since before they were born mm -hmm. and it's really about who you are as an individual you become what you attract right and so the purpose is to become what you want to attract and so when we look at the brand and how we define you know, what's a good product? We, we don't necessarily look at if, if the product is good, because I think there are no bad businesses. They're just bad business owners. Yep. Um, everyone's not your customer, and everyone's also not your client. So is there synergy between you and the individual you're going to do business with? Because any, any product can be marketed. Any product can be built as a brand. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of how you message it and what, you, what you're putting with that particular product. So... I don't think there is any type of separation between, between the two. I think it's more about how they come together versus how, how they're separate. So let's start with a phone call. You get a phone call from a brand that's, that's uh, you know, on the way up but really isn't quite hitting their stride. How does that conversation go, and what's the first step you take them through? The first thing I do is try to understand what it is that they're trying to accomplish. What are their objectives? Um, if once we can identify the objectives, then we can put a plan together. So if, for example, a company says, I want to do $100 million next year, well, that's not really something that's, it's obtainable, but it's not something that's realistically obtainable. Probable, probably not possible. Not reasonable, yeah. Right? right, and so we have to look at what are the objectives, and then once we have an objective, I want to see where you are, what you've done, and what you haven't done what you've done good and what you haven't done good, what you've thought about, what you haven't thought about. Mm -hmm. And so we think outside the box. We don't think along with what everyone else does. When, when, when I start a new business, I'm not looking at what people are doing right now necessarily. I'm looking at it because it's a trend. But I look at it with the Earl Nightingale syndrome, and I say, what are people going to be doing 10 years from now? And I want to take that and do that now. I want to do 10 years from now now so that we're ahead of the trend. The trend is still in existence because people see it, and most people, while I, I always say you have to have a, a Michael Tesla thought process or Oprah Winfrey ta thought process where their thoughts are illogical, their dreams are illogical, right. and they put their thoughts in that same realm to accomplish the impossible that most people would see as mm -hmm. impossible. So when I look at it, it's really about what are the objectives, what are you trying to get to, what are we working towards, and can we do this with synergy? That's everything with, with new business. So, so. on balance, um, given the opportunity to choose between a new up-and-comer with a great idea and passion, somebody that's in the middle with a bit of money and a really large corporation, where do you like to play best? I mean, where's your best success rate? With the person. I mean, it, it, it's always going to come back to the person. It doesn't, we can make money together if we have a great relationship. Does it hope that money's already on the table? Of course. But I would much rather have there a better relationship than a whole lot of money with someone, in terms of business. Yeah, right? totally understand. Um, so for me, it plays more, how do I get along with this person? Can I, do we resonate? Are we on the same page? And, and, and that being said, there has to be some difference as well, because that's where the balance comes in. So everyone's not going to be agreeable. Yeah, you don't want to be a mirror to, it, exactly. to your client, right? Exactly. That so sure. uh, but that's the biggest thing for me is how do I connect with you? You know, we can do whatever we need to do because I believe that you can do anything you just haven't learned yet, right? So we can do anything that we, we want to do. It's just a matter of is there a connection between you and I that will allow us to get there? So it sounds to me like the key to working with Demetrius Brown or getting you to choose me as a client which is, as an as a entrepreneur, I'm as often choosing clients as they're choosing us. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we have a profile that works. We know what's good for us. But it seems to me like that unless you're open to that, mm -hmm. it, this is truly a personal joint oppor uh, opportunity that we're going to work together as people, 
that it isn't something that you're going to want to get involved in? It, yes and no. I, okay. I, my, my biggest thing is I don't have clients. I have partners. Yeah. Right? My clients are not clients that people will look at. They're partners. Right. Because the objective is long-term, and the partnerships are long-term. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that as you're growing, we're growing as well. So we've been in business for 14 years. I've never marketed the agency. And we've done very well because of our relationships with our partners. From referrals, by referrals, back to referrals. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. And, and for us to go after new business, I think it's important for us to have skin in the game. So mm -hmm. before we've ever spoken to you, we've completely redesigned your website. We've completely done a lot of things for you to show you that we are serious about what it is that you're serious about. So how is that process triggered? How do you choose... Because I'm guessing you're not doing that randomly. So, um, <laughs> you know, that's a lot of effort. Right. So how do you choose who to put that effort into? We, I have a full team who scours the Internet for okay. bad websites. Right? There's plenty of those. There's a lot of them. <laughs> so we look, for, right? yeah. we look for bad <laughs> websites, and we do a bad news report. We tell them everything that's wrong with their website. It's about okay. a $20,000 analysis that we go through. But that's us putting skin in the game. Mm -hmm. We're letting you know that we're serious about what it is that you're serious about. We look at it as your website is your secretary. You never allow someone to see your your secretary with a missing tooth or her hair uncombed mm -hmm. or not, you know, presenting herself or himself in a way that's going to be suitable for the company. Your website's the same way. That's the first thing people see before they interact with you, and they're going to make a, a determination of whether or not they're going to do business with you based off of that perception. Mm -hmm. So for us, if your website's bad, we'll put something together for you and we send it over to you for a conversation about your company and our company, mm -hmm. the owners of those companies, not the business. Right. It's never about the business. It's about the relationship. Sure. And that's what we do on a consistent basis. We 30, 40, 50 sites a week. So just a couple of, of examples that you can throw out for us of really successful relationship that's paid off for you in the last five years. Uh, Medtronic okay. is huge um, for us. Um, Smith & Nephew, the Wound Institute, the Jordan brand, um, or the flight school for the Jordan And what do you brand. think were the key components to the winning in, in those? Was it the mutual commitment and, or was it the combination of they had a right opportunity, right time? I mean, what do you think was the... Um, I, I think it was... These were all referrals, other than the, the Jordan Well, that always helps, but, yeah. Right, so it was doing good work. It was putting ourselves in, in a place where there are times where, you know, we may not charge you $50,000 for something because it's not about the money. It's about making sure your product works. So mm -hmm. we may have to go back and rework something that we've already done for you, and we've done that for our clients. And so because of that, it's, it's given us opportunities for referrals. Uh, Smith & Nephew came as a referral. The, mm -hmm. the uh, Wound Institute was as a referral. Um, Medtronic was as a referral. So it's, it's, been, it's been an existence for us based off of what we put on the table in, in the work that we so do. So I understand you're also a, a serial entrepreneur and that you're, <laughs> you're involved in some of these things in more than just brand awareness. Why don't you talk a little bit about that, if you would? I am. I, uh, my, my best friend and I, my, my wife, we... Uh, we are serial entrepreneurs. We get into whatever we're passionate about. Warren Buffett said that he owned 87 businesses, mm -hmm. and I couldn't wrap my head around it at the How's time. How's that even possible? Right? Right? You don't have yeah. the bandwidth, right? Yep. But what he said was you missed the operative word, and the operative word was he owned. Mm -hmm. And what I realized in that moment was business runners never grow. Business owners grow. And so what he said, his philosophy was, I'm going to find someone who loves to run the type of business that I start. I'm going to give them everything they need to succeed. I'm going to get out of the way, and then I hire slow and fire quick. Mm -hmm. I said I can Compressed do that. Compressed decisions, right? yeah. So we began to do that, and we looked at um, whatever we're passionate about. We turn it into a business because you never fail in your passion, mm -hmm. and it's never work. So we turned our passions into businesses. Um, we have a business called Garble, which is dealing with all of the... Um, data encryption that the data is being hacked so we've created a system that allows you to protect your data at rest five layers deep mm -hmm. but ours is unique in the sense that your first name is encrypted five layers deep your last name is encrypted five layers deep so if you have 30 fields before a hacker can get one of your records they have to decrypt every single field mm -hmm. not just a record most people think your your information so is independent 
I'm a cybersecurity. No, it's okay. I can't help but ask now. <laughs> <laughs> so you have separate keys for the layers, is what you're Everything. saying. Everything. Okay, got password, it. Password, right. encryption, password, yeah. encryption, password. Yeah, for each I'm like, single man, layer. you're dragging yeah. me down in a place I wasn't <laughs> planning to go, but that's all right. That's all right. But, but that's what it's important. That's an exciting place right it now. It is. It is. So, and you look at uh, the gentleman mentioned earlier about um, blockchain. You know, mm -hmm. I think it's phenomenal. I just don't know where my data is. Mm -hmm. You know, so there are some pros and cons to everything. Well, you also don't know who's controlling. Who's it. controlling it? Now, so, to yeah. me, that's the, the the it's great for for the uses that it has. Right. But at the same time, uh, unless you're doing your own, creating your own blockchain environment, and then exactly. that kind of removes the whole anonymous ledger issue. And, exactly. You know. So, but yeah, we digressed. Um, <laughs> it's, it's all right. But but uh, yeah, we we deal with, with we have Garble. That's um, great. We have a platform. Are you I'm familiar with um, with Blue Apron? No, I'm not, not personally. So no. Blue Apron and the plate, there's these meal services, uh -huh. um, where meal planning for the most part. And as I said, we take what people are doing now and we do what they're going to do 10 years from now. Right, so right. We allow you to go to the website. You're able to select your meals for the week. Um, we shop, we chop, or you shop, we chop. We literally send someone to your home to prep all your food for that particular really? week. It's, it's a way of getting people back to the dinner table, getting families more engaged with with their children, or if you're a busy professional and you don't have time to cook, a way to get your food on the table within yeah. 20 minutes. Well, and that's you know? a big deal. I mean, we, you know, and that goes back to what you were talking about, you know, family and, and doing right by people. And I can say that if we get more people to the dinner table, that'd probably be a really good thing for society <laughs> in general, exactly. just to have people sitting with their families. Exactly. Right? So um, what's your dream? I and mean, where, where do you see yourself in the big picture in the next five years? Oh, man, in the next five years, I see myself... Um, with with these businesses that we currently have being extremely successful but more importantly more importantly and not to detract from all the businesses i see myself on the pga tour so Good for you <laughs> I see myself so let's on talk the a little bit about that we have about two minutes left okay. i'd love to chat about that <clears throat> so you're a golfer i love and golf. i hear you're a successful golfer I, 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 but you're going to be a I will be a much more successful golfer All on right. the PGA there Tour. There you go. <laughs> right on. And, does, and now, are you driving forward to that because it's something you want to succeed at? Is it because it's fun? I mean, what's the... It is something that I have a huge passion for. Okay. Um, I, I had no respect for it at first until I began playing the game, and then I realized it became the most challenging and fulfilling sport I'd ever played. Mm -hmm. um, it's just you. Your competitor is the golf course, not the yeah. people you're playing with. And you can never overpower the course, but you can outthink it. Yeah. And so I, I have a great affinity for it. And, and you have to look at all the subtleties of what's everything. around you, the wind, the light, the, everything. the temperature. The, but you also have to stay know. focused. Right. Right. So yeah, and that's sure. the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, so for those that are trying to start out in a business and that, that may or may not be able to get the attention of someone like yourself, what are the two things they can do to get off of that? I'm going to wake up in the morning with a dream and forget about it as I get on my shoes and go to work at my at my everyday job. I think the biggest thing is people have to understand that we create failure. Mm -hmm. right? Failure doesn't exist until you stop. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're working at, continue to work at it. And have a clearer understanding about who you speak to, who you're communicating with, who you're asking questions to, what questions are you asking. Um, John Maxwell... Make sure you're asking questions, right? right? Yeah. He... he uh, um, uh, there's a book called Great Leaders, Good Leaders Ask Great Questions. Mm -hmm. And so the questions you ask are as important as who you ask. And so having a mentor when you're starting out is, is crucial. But the biggest thing is to not stop. Failure doesn't exist until you stop. You've not mm -hmm. failed until you stop. Right? I, I tell people that all changes is a thought that's followed up by action. So if you want something different than what you have, you have to put action behind the yeah. thought. Yeah, it won't happen by going, I'd like it to change, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> and, and success takes hard work. I mean, it does. you know, I've been in the same company 17 years. I started out at the bottom of the totem pole, I'm number two in the company, and we just had our biggest year ever. So, mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it's true, it never stops. It just changes a little bit. It just changes. And there's a, a, a statement that someone made to me a few years ago that letting go of the vine so you can grab a new one is not failure. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So, <laughs> so you got to drop sometimes so in order to get back up and yes. get on a vine that works. Yes. Um, and fact, if you haven't failed, in my opinion, you're not trying hard enough. So. Right. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for your I time. So I've had a blast having, having you yes, in. Sir. And in fact, I think we're definitely going to have to talk some more, and I, we can talk more specifically about certain things and, and get a little deeper into the details definitely. of how you do things. That would be great if you were willing to come back. Definitely. Thank you, Demetrius. Thank you so appreciate much. I appreciate you. It. You watching Eye on Business. I'm Kevin McDonald, and with us tonight was Demetrius Brown with Infinite Ideas Development Group, and we hope you'll come back. Thank you so much.